We're all set to go now. 15 rounds for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. On my right, the challenger from Managua, Nicaragua, weighing 124 and one quarter pounds, a pro record of 41 and three, Alexis Arguello. And on my left, from Mexico City, weighing 125 and a half pounds, he is the WBA featherweight champion of the world, Ruben Olivares. I see my, I see your mouth, Pete. All right. Well, fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. There's just a couple of them that I want to refresh your mind on. Now, I don't want any low blows. I want all blows above the belt line. Don't hold with one hand and hit with the free hand. Then of a knockdown, the man down, take a count of eight. The man that's on his feet will go to the farthest corner and remain there until I motion him out. Now I'll give you the opportunity to work out of every clinch. But whatever you're doing, when I say break, you stop what you're doing and step back but protect yourselves when you do. Okay? Now you can use Vaseline but go light. All right, shake hands. Good luck. Timken along with Louis Moreno here at ringside the fabulous forum the fight everybody's been waiting for 15 rounds for the WBA featherweight championship of the world between the champion Ruben Olivares and the challenger Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua I think the first thing everyone notices right off the bat Louis is the height discrepancy Arguello is just a wee bit taller I would say very, very tall for a featherweight. And can he punch? 41 wins, three losses, which include 36 knockouts. Of course, Ruben Olivares' record speaks for itself, as he is the champion, 76 wins out of 80 pro fights, and he has stopped 69 opponents. Ruben Olivares, the shorter of the two fighters, wearing blue trunks, and Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua, Wearing the white trunks with the blue feather. And all of us catches Arguello off balance. All of us has been through the wars. He knows what it's all about. This is the big, big step for Alexis Arguello. Ring-wise veteran at 26, knows every trick in the book, but rarely needs them. As he, as most ring scribes consider one of the greatest bantamweight champions to ever live, and he's making his mark as a featherweight champion. in excellent shape and are well prepared to go the 15 round limit if necessary but neither fighter expects it as both have predicted knockouts almost the end of round one Two 
scheduled 15 rounders for the WBA featherweight title with the champion Oliveris defending his crown against Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua. Oliveris, the former Bantamweight chieftain, acquired his title last July 9th right here at the Forum when he stopped Japan's Senzuki Unagawa in seven rounds. This was an elimination for the championship, left vacant by Panama's Ernesto Marcel. But right now, Ruben Oliveris, the champion, defending his crown against the much taller Alexis Arguello. left hook thrown by Arguello landing on the arm of Oliveris. It's been about it up until now. Both fighters very cautious and reasonably so. There's a lot on the line tonight. Alexis Arguello, many of his Nicaraguan countrymen up here to see their 22-year-old hopeful possibly wrestle a crown away from Ruben Oliveras. Oliveras weighed in at 125 and a half tonight, or should I say this morning, and the challenger Alexis Arguello weighed in at 124 and a quarter. <laughs> 30 seconds left in round number two. title, the featherweight title, World Boxing Association version. And the WBC featherweight title holder was here tonight. Wish both fighters well. Schoolboy Bobby Chacon. Needless to say, Arguello holds the height and the reach advantage over his smaller opponent, champion Ruben Oliveras. Just sticking to his jab, moving, bobbing, waving, waiting for the opening. Oliveris has been in with the best. He knows what it's all about, and he won't be fooled. Doesn't make many mistakes. Has been down, but gets up and usually stops the opponent. A right hand thrown by Oliveris. Lands on the jaw.
Aguayo against the ropes. But now Alexis comes back. coming to a close. Number four, scheduled 15 rounder for the World Featherweight title. Arguello has had some exciting moments himself. I should say more on the negative side as he was right in the middle of that tremendous earthquake in Managua on December 23, 1972. And he saved himself and his family from great harm. But right now, the only thing these two fighters are concentrating on are each other and what they can do. left in round number four. <laughs> round number five, scheduled 15 rounder. Jeff Temkin along with the very famous Louis Moreno here at ringside at the Forum. Bringing you live action between the champion, the featherweight champion, Ruben Olivares, and the highly touted challenger from Nicaragua, Alexis Arguello. Louis, there's been a pretty even fight up until now. How do you have it scored? Well, uh, I have Olivares a little bit in favor now, but uh, it's really nothing to say. I think it's an, an even fight until now. Yeah, I think so too, but there's a long way to go. And both fighters have been known to be extremely explosive. Oliveris 
the champion from Mexico City. Fine ring record of 76 wins, just four losses and one draw. And he has stopped 69 opponents. Arguello, 41 wins, three losses with 36 scales. And it's Arguello on the march. Arguello throwing the long overhand lefts and rights. Fighting back. This has been Arguello's round up until now. Less than 10 seconds left. Ruben Alvarez hoped to have as much success as a featherweight as he did as a bantamweight. Aguayo was dictating the pace against the more compact Alvarez, whose left eye was beginning to swell. Round number six. And Arguello's handlers told their tall challenger to come out. They think they have found a way of beating Oliveras. And Arguello comes out firing. Slipping most of those punches, fans. The crowd is really reacting, but most of those punches are on the gloves of Oliveras. However, the ones there are quite a few of them are finding home. Big crowd here at the fabulous forum in Inglewood, California. Number six. Dick Young steps in to break up the two fighters. It's the end of round number six. Round number seven. And in between rounds, Ruben Olivares' corner were working on his left eye. And it's bothering Olivares. Left eye, uh, slight abrasion right above the eyebrow. And that could 
mean real trouble as it's only round seven. And you can bet Alexis Arguello will go to work. On that eye, as of right now, it has not opened and it is not bleeding, but it is swollen. This is it, 15 rounds for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. to start bleeding. One minute left in round seven. right hand right on the eye that has been giving Oliveira some trouble in the last couple rounds. Oliveira's corner working on that eye. A slight cut, a slight cut. And now both fighters toe to toe again. I don't know how long they can keep that action up without somebody going down. Streaming down the side of Oliveris' left eye. But he has been the aggressor, and he's laying the leather to Alexis Arguello. Oliveris' left eye is bleeding, but it's Oliveris who's throwing most of the leather now. his punches up, scoring to the body, scoring to the head, has our goal again. 
against the ropes. Now it's Arguello coming back. Look, all the way scoring to the body with those sharp left hooks. with a left hook. <laughs> Oliveris' corner did a good job of closing up Rubens' cut above his left eyebrow. <laughs> Has not reopened. This has really been a fast-paced all-action fight. And it figured to be. There's a lot on the line. The world title. And not many people get a shot at it, as Arguello, I'm sure, realizes. for each other. As round nine slowly comes to a close. Ten seconds left. Aguayo, at 5 feet 10, was tall for a featherweight, 5 inches taller than Ruben Oliveira's. A good boxer and a better puncher, he'd plant his feet and just stand there. He was difficult to hit because of his height and reach advantage, and his long right hand was very powerful. By round 10, the young Aguayo was holding his own. He only gone past 11th round twice. Now he faced his toughest test to see if he had the will to become a champion. Number 10. Oliveris wipes the sweat away from his eye. 
And his handlers in his corner have done such a great job closing. punches this round. But Arguello has not gone down. Oliveris pushing his taller opponent into the corner, hammering away at the body. seconds left. Coming into the home stretch now. Oliveris has been the aggressor the last several rounds. Louis, how do you how do you think the fight's going right now? Well, I think that everybody is. Uh, it's in favor now. The last two rounds, he just uh, beat completely Arguello. It seems that those body shots that Oliveras has been landing are finally taking its toll and tiring out the taller Arguello. Well, you can see that he's working more relaxed now. He's uh, doing whatever he wants to do. That's the Olivares that we've been seeing here many times. Huh? Right. A true great champion. It's not that about how uh, big fighting this Olivares. We've got a minute and a half left in round 11. And all of us starting in with those body flurries again. A man can just take so much. <laughs> Oliveris is really dishing it out. But Arguello has not been in danger of going down. He has been holding his own and been countering with jabs and overhand rights himself. One minute left. 
seconds left. Both fighters slowing it down a little bit this last minute. combination that'll put Arguello away and Arguello of course realizing that the fight is close is looking for his own remedy to put Oliveras away but he has not been able to put Arguello down. Punch Oliveras is dishing out. No power at all in the uh, Arguello punches. Arguello is really tired. There's no power at all in the punches. Not much on his punches.
He's coming back. There's a long way to go, only one minute. Dick Young. Gentlemen, the time, one minute, 20 seconds. 